In the three weeks of the anti-Israel, anti-Jew protests across the country, there have been a total of 2,500 arrests across 50 campuses. These protests are steamrolling the Democratic Party, and it's because of a lack of leadership. Welcome to Counterthought. It's been a minute since the last episode, but I'm back and ready to tackle this craziness that is going on in our country regarding the anti-Israel, anti-Jew protests across our college campuses. As I said in the opening, as of this recording, there have been around 2,500 arrests across 50 different campuses in the United States. Now, you may remember going back all the way to April 17th, that is when the protests first began on Columbia University in New York City. And from Columbia, it spread to George Washington, to NYU, to Ivy League schools, to schools across the the Midwest and the South and the West Coast, UCLA, USC, Southern Cal, UT Austin, Vanderbilt, the University of Florida, my alma mater, George Washington University in Washington, D.C. They have all experienced and or are currently experiencing these protests against Israel. And when I say against Israel, it's I'm not talking about just the state of Israel. I am talking about it is encompassing of Jews as a whole because, because that is what is being uh, protested. That is the that is what is included in the chants and the literature that's being, the pamphlets that's being handed out, everything that is being shared, put on um, posters and everything at these protests. They're not protesting the Israel state because as a, as a state, they are protesting against the Jewish people. You know, Jews are a culture and a race and a country, right? 2,500 arrests in these three weeks. And it comes from a lack of leadership, in my opinion. These protests are steamrolling. They are annihilating the Democratic Party. More than likely, it's going to sink Joe Biden and his re-election campaign. Now, I was not alive for the protests of the Vietnam War going back, I believe it's to the 68, 1968, like Democratic National Convention. But I've heard stories about it. There's obviously footage of it, videos, images. And a lot of pundits are saying that this could be Joe Biden's Vietnam. That he he cannot appease both sides. You have these anti-Israel protesters, which we'll get into more details about them here in a second. They are the radicals. He doesn't want to lose them because they are... He believes, and his advisors believe, a key piece to winning a state of Michigan, Dearborn, Michigan specifically. A lot of Palestinians live there. But he also doesn't want to lose the, the Democrat Jewish vote and the Democratic Party as a whole by giving in to these protesters. So he wants to um, please the protesters, please the radicals, while also trying to please the rest of his party who support Israel. And Biden has, it's like a miscalculation, a severe miscalculation. And this doesn't just roll up to Biden. This goes to the college campuses. It goes to the culture. It goes to the Department of Education and their leadership. It goes to local um, city officials and their leadership or lack of leadership. So this is not just a Biden problem. These protests are not just a Biden problem. Does it ultimately reflect upon him because he is the, the leader of their party as the president of the United States? Yes. But the leadership, the lack of leadership exists at multiple, multiple levels. So these protests, these protests, a lot, you'll hear, you've heard a lot of this, right? This has been going on for three weeks. You hear about, oh, we have free speech. And, you know, we're on a college campus, you know, private university, code of conduct, student code of conduct. All we're doing, the protesters, protesters say, all we're doing is exercising our free speech. Well, that is not entirely true. Yes, you have free speech in this country. And yes, hates, hate speech, quote unquote, is 
is free speech. But the legality or what is what the illegal acts that they're committing, which has led to these 2,500 arrests, again, across 50 campuses, is Title VI of the Civil Rights Act, which says that these colleges and universities cannot allow a group of individuals based on race, ethnicity, religion, to be um, basically discriminated against on the college campuses, whether you are a private university or a public university. And when this all began back in Columbia, Columbia initially, initially tried to get control of this. Starting on April 17th, and the anti-Israel protests since then again have spread nationwide. But initially, Columbia authorized the NYPD, the New York Police Department, to restore order the next day on April 18th. And more than 100 protesters were arrested. You've seen pictures of all of these encampments across the, the universities. Again, my University of Florida, my alma mater, they have had, uh, and well, DeSantis and Ben Sass, the president of the, of the University of Florida, and then DeSantis across the entire state of Florida for all the, the state universities said that we're not going to allow this to happen. They saw what was going on at these first few universities, campuses, especially Columbia. And they went ahead and said, no, like this is not going to happen. You can protest. You have your rights of free speech. But once you start to violate like the occupation of a public space, such as the quad, on a campus and you create these encampments with your tents and create little tent cities and everything with your water. I mean, these people are going, are committed. Like they don't want, they don't plan to leave at all. These protesters, they have tents and little canopies set up with, you know, the plastic tables, the full, with the collapsible tables and they have water and they have a little charging station. Like, I mean, these people, they're funded, right? They're organized. And they don't plan on leaving. They're going to force the police to, to arrest them and remove them. And then it is incumbent upon the officials, like the university presidents and the administrators and chancellors and whoever, to actually enforce and keep them off of their campus because, again, they are in violation of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. But those initial arrests at Columbia that really sparked the spread of, of these protests across different college campuses. We saw an uprising at UT Austin. We saw UCLA that had, I believe the first instance of, of violence that was like an overnight, overnight scrum and people being uh, fireworks getting shot off. And I, I believe someone's tased and, you know, hit with pieces of plywood that were part of these encampments and everything else. You maybe seen had, had maybe seen videos of, individuals running with as foolish as they look stupid as they look with bike helmets on and in one of those big um, like brute trash cans that were sliced to create a a plastic shield and they're trying to run through and get away from the cops and then there's this one this one video clip of a cop just basically doing a standard push just and knocks the protester right down to the ground because he's so, so weak and feeble and off balance and then dragging him back down to the ground to arrest him. But these protests spread. And initially, Columbia, again, had NYPD come in. But then they didn't do much of anything. They caved. And some of these protests have led to these colleges, again, this lack of leadership, such as the University of Southern California, and now Columbia the other day announced that they were joining the University of Southern California and canceling their commencements, their graduations. Why these presidents, these chancellors, the administrators of a lot of these colleges and universities are caving to and negotiating with these protesters, and some of them are students and a lot of them are professional agitators, why they are even uh, giving them any kind of leverage is beyond me, I do not understand what they are doing it is a lack of leadership. They, th these administrators, the people in charge, they have a weak spine 
and these they are allowing they are canceling these graduations something four years you know working up to this for four years for that class and again this is 24 2024 so four years ago these kids were graduating high school when the pandemic right and we saw the videos because this the schools were not allowing in high school they were not allowing you know like the big regular commencements and graduation so these kids were having their their own little graduations like in their neighborhood doing their little graduation parades maybe sitting in a car standing up out there on the front lawn of their of their house with signs and their cap and gown on and you know just trying to make the best of it and then now four years later these same students who didn't have a high school graduation in many many of these states are now at some of these colleges and universities like california new york are not having a college graduation And one of the girls I saw a TikTok, she's, you know, complaining about this. She goes to the University of Southern California. She's like, like, what in the world? Like, this is ridiculous. I worked four years for this moment and it, college graduation and actual ceremony might not mean a lot to you, but it means a lot to a lot of people. I participated in my undergraduate um, graduation ceremony at the University of Florida. One of my favorite pictures from college is when I'm going across the stage and I'm pointing up to where I know my family is. And they took a picture on the, the big jumbotron within the basketball arena, the O-Dome. And you can see me like smiling and pointing up to them. Like, I, I think that's pretty cool. But this girl's like, you know, what am I supposed to do? And my comment to her, I mean, she doesn't know who I am, right? But just on TikTok, my comment to her was, do not emulate the leadership that you are seeing at your university, at the University of Southern California. These protesters, these agitators, they are defacing property like at George Washington, wrapping up the statue of George Washington in a, in a kafia and everything, right? Defacing it, spray painting it. They are breaking the law, right? Title VI with these encampments, screaming out at Jewish students and not allowing them to, to go to their classes or, or um, not imitating I can't think of the word. I'm just blanking on it. But anyway, you know, taking over the administrative building, that one office at Columbia University, and then using a chain. And don't listen to the media who sides with these people. I saw a tweet by one um, by one media member saying, "Oh, look, the uh, mayor Eric Adams or the New York City commissioner was holding up this bike chain, and it's just a bike chain, and they actually sell it, you know, on Columbia's campus. You can just buy it. Look, it's right here, and you attach the PDF." And this was a bold faced lie. Because if you clicked the link that was included on the tweet on X, the post on X, maybe they're thinking you're stupid. Click the link, it, it's a PDF and it shows all the bike locks, the U locks, and like your basic little rope chain. None of those items on the approved public safety, which is the argument they are making and issued by the university, was on that PDF. The chain that we was being held up was like a big quarter inch to three eighth inch thick link chain, something that you would have to go to like a Home Depot or elsewhere to buy, you know, this commercial industrial grade chain. This is not something that was pre-approved that you can just go buy from the school store. So the media who are encouraging and support this behavior, these protests, do not believe them. They are gaslighting you and lying to your face about what is actually going on. But this lack of leadership, I mean, breaking into a building, arrested, right? These encampments, trespassing, arrest them, agitating the Jewish students as they're going to class or physically not allowing them to go to certain parts of campus, which we have seen, that is illegal. So these 2,500 arrests, there probably should be more. And these 2,500 arrests shouldn't have been happening in weeks two and week three. They should have been happening in week one. You are allowed by the First Amendment to protest. But as soon as you break the law, the chancellors, the presidents, these administrators, the police departments, the campus police departments, they should have been arresting these individuals and not giving them any kind of leverage. Negotiation. Negotiation. They're wanting these, these protesters are wanting the universities to, or they are demanding divestment 
from um, affiliations with companies who are affiliation or affiliated with this, with Israel, right? Like, what kind of leverage? Who are you, right? <laughs> These people think so much of themselves, but they have should have no influence on anything that is going on in Israel through these colleges and universities. Like, oh, you think you're doing something so great over here? What you are doing here in America has no influence or should have no influence on what Israel is deciding to do in their war against Hamas. And the fact that these le- these quote-unquote leaders are caving to these people is ridiculous. It is stupid. It is idiotic. It is weak. Once these protesters have broken the law or their student code of conduct, if they are a student, they should be suspended or expelled. If they're not a student, they're a professional agitator, they should be arrested. These protesters should not be given any kind of leverage with these colleges and universities. Should just be shut down. Why, why try to placate the mob? You will never be able to placate a mob. And I've talked about these protests going back all the way to October 7th in episodes 96, 99, in episode 100, I believe also episode 98. So 96, 98, 99, and 100. I've talked about everything that is going on with the anti-Israel movement here in the United States. And it's not just with Gen Z. They are being indoctrinated on these college campuses by people who are, you know, older Gen Xers or maybe baby uh, baby boomers who were part of those protests in the 60s and the 70s. They are the ones leading this indoctrination, and it's and it's ridiculous to believe that in this day and age we have the most information at our fingertips in the palm of your hand with your cell phone. More information you have access to more information than at any time ever in the world. And these people, these protesters, are believing false information and have these misguided morals and principles and values to where they are literally siding and supporting a terrorist group. And this terrorist group has affiliations with these organizations that are funding a lot of these protests. And even people inside America like you hear George Soros's name all the time. You hear like Justice for Palestine, these other groups. It's like they just want to see the world or the United States burn. I think of that scene from um, from the Batman movie with Joker. You know, that was played in that movie um, by Heath Ledger, rest in peace. Sometimes People just want to see the world burn. In that movie, the story was told of this, like rubies just being left in the in the forest. You know, like the the person not having any kind of care about the rubies because they just wanted to see the world burn. Like it wasn't about money; they just wanted to see the destruction of of the world. And in this case, it'd be America. And I, and I butchered that scene reference, so forgive me on that. But that is what I think, part of what I think is going on here. The destruction from America, the destruction from within. And this isn't an isolated, this isn't isolated to us. Our, people across the country, other countries, our allies are seeing what is happening here. Our adversaries is seeing what is happening here. And how do you think this reflects upon them? What kind of confidence can they have in the United States of America When they see what is going on here and us not being able to rein in the craziness and the illegality of these protests, that we have this 
this misguided rot within our country advocating for the death of an entire nation. What does that show to our allies? What does that show to our adversaries? It shows weakness, weak leadership, misguided, incorrect leadership on behalf of the presidents and the chancellors of these universities, on behalf of the Department of Education. Funding should be pulled. Miguel Cardona, the the education secretary wrote a letter. It should have been more than a letter. It should be saying funds are going to be removed. And then watch how quickly, how quickly these um, these colleges, these college presidents and chancellors wake up and, and try to get control of what's going on on their campuses. This mob of anti-Israel protests cannot be pleased. You cannot placate them. This mob rule, which we see from the extreme left, cannot be cannot be pleased. We've seen this with George Floyd and going back to the BLM riots of the summer of 2020, supposed to be the summer of peace. We saw Chop and Chaz zone right up in, I think it was Oregon in Portland. We saw billions of dollars of damage from lighting businesses and other places on fire during those protests, those summer protests, which were allowed throughout COVID, right? So we can just see the activism that is going on here. We also saw the mob rule being applied as we crept towards election day at the end of 2020, because everybody knew there were business owners and residents of these cities, especially the democratic cities, where these same protests had happened in the months prior that summer in 2020 for BLM. They were boarding up their businesses in anticipation that if Trump won, there were going to be protests and riots again in the streets in response to a Trump victory. You don't think that mob rule had a little bit of an influence on the election in 2020, having making people scared or people, people allowing themselves to be scared of this mob, this extreme left mob. Once you allow these, once you give control to the mob, they are not going to relinquish it. Once they know they can control your actions and influence your actions, they are never going to give that up. And each time one of these chancellors, these presidents of these universities, again, this is now spread across at least 50 campuses in our country. Once you give any kind of leverage to these protesters, these agitators, They have you. 2,500 arrests in three weeks across 50 different campuses. Still waiting on Biden to come out and make a strong stance. Still waiting on these college presidents. Still waiting on the Department of Education to actually do something to put an end to the, the illegal encampments and the agitation and the threats made against the Jewish students. Everything that is illegal should be stopped. You can protest, right? You have your right to free speech, but once you cross the cross the threshold and you do something illegal, it should be stopped individually and collectively. But because it hasn't, and this has carried on for three weeks, three weeks, and we still have university presidents and administrators meeting with these, these protesters, these agitators, giving them some type of leverage. It is just a continual display of a continuous display of the lack of leadership on the left. They created this problem. They are now exacerbating this problem. And they are trying to please both sides and stay committed to their uh, diversity, their equity, their inclusion, their their victimhood mentality, their their allegiance to victimhood and their intersectionality. They are consuming themselves because of everything that they have created. And when the moment arrived for them to actually gain control and show a strong spine and leadership and get this under control, they have failed. They are ruled by the mob. The left is ruled by the mob. And they are steamrolling the entire party and could potentially steamroll 
Biden's re-election efforts. Now, I'm not opposed to that because that would be a Trump victory, but I don't like what will be left in the wake of this mob. And you as an individual, as a voter, as a citizen of the United States, do not allow yourself to be influenced by this mob rule. Believe, stay true to your values and your principles. And hopefully the leadership within the, the Democratic left will gain control of this. And if not, the leaders in the Republican Party, the governors, the other administrators at the colleges in, in those red states, there is a true difference between how uh, colleges and universities in red states are handling this versus blue states. And it is a clear depiction of leadership styles. So I hope, I hope the left grows a spine and gets control of these, of these protests and takes harsh action against these protesters. An arrest is not enough because they're just being let right back, right back out onto the streets and then they're congregating again and creating their encampments again on these college campuses. There needs to be more severe action against these individuals when they break the law. It all goes back to leadership. The left has a severe problem with leadership because they try to please everyone and you cannot do that. But do not allow yourself to be ruled by the mob. Stay true to your principles and your values and your convictions. Hi, I'm Brian Kletter, the creator and host of Counterthought. For more Counterthought content, watch these two videos and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and spread the word.